In this video, I'll show you how to reconstruct the data you have acquired from the ASTAR top spin system. The session was assisted by my student De Xin Zhao. The sample is a polycrystalline deposited gold thin film. The sample was kindly provided by Professor Ji Dong Sim from KAIST in Korea. There are three softwares you're going to use, DiffGen, Index, and Map Viewer. These are the gray, green, and white icons on the screen. Double click on DiffGen first, and a window will open. What you see here is the diffraction pattern from the reconstruction of the previous work. From the cell structure editor, click on import structure. Since we know it is gold, so we can just select the CIF file of gold, which is the au.cif file. I want to add a very quick note here. The ASTAR top spin software comes with a database, so most of the structures you work on will be in the database. If you work on a very novel structure which does not exist in the database, you can always create the CIF file, then import it. Have a very quick look. The space group and the lattice parameters, they seem reasonable. Moving to the diffraction pattern window on the left, now input the instrument parameters. We use a Technite TF20, so the TEM voltage will be 200 keV. We usually leave the maximum angle excitation error the same. The precession angle we used in our experiment was 0.3 degrees, so we input 0.3. For the rest of the parameters, we leave everything as they are. However, I strongly encourage you to explore what you can play with these parameters and what these parameters mean. Now, we are ready to create the bank file. We need bank file to do orientation reconstruction. You click on create bank and a new window will appear called bank file creation. By default, the step count is 50. The corresponding template count is 1326. The template count can be viewed as how many diffraction patterns you simulate, which will be compared to the experimentally acquired data. What we usually do is to set the step count to 100, and you can see the template count increases to 5151. This gives better angular resolution. Then save the directory where you like to save the bank file. Named file then click on save and create. This is real time, so you can see it's very fast. Once it's done, close all the windows. You have successfully created a bank file, which contains the simulated diffraction pattern of gold in your instrument. Next, will compare the experimentally acquired diffraction pattern to the simulated ones to tell us the orientation of individual grains. To do that, double-click the green index icon, click on Start a new project, and a new window called Index Block File will, will appear. Click on the images, then select the Open Image from Block to open the block file. Locate the block file, double-click, to open. Then click on OK. You will see two viewing windows. The one on the left is the diffraction pattern, the one on the right is the virtual bright field image. When dragging the cursor around, you can see the corresponding diffraction pattern to that pixel. Now click on the template and in the drop down menu, select Add Template Bank, select the bank file which is created for gold and you see the third viewing window. In the third viewing window, the black spots are from the experimentally acquired diffraction pattern and the red circles are from the simulated templates. With the current setting, it seems to be a fairly good match. To further improve the match, we need to fine-tune the camera length. I will add one more note here. When doing the camera length calibration, try to find a pixel that's close to one of the zone axes. In this case, you have many spots to do the matching. Try to avoid the two beam conditions or some random orientation. 
To fine-tune camera length, click on Camera Length. The first window now has changed. For our instrument, we usually do a scan from 5 to 20. Then click on Scan Camera Length. We see the highest value or the best match is around 14. Note now, by default, the camera length is 13.5. When clicking on the red curve at the highest point, it will change to a better value. The value now is 14.15, and now it's 14. We're pretty happy with 14, so we'll proceed with camera length of 14. Drag, up, drag our cursor on the virtual bright field and look at whether it has a good match between the experimentally acquired data and the simulated template. To me, it looks fairly good. We are ready to reconstruct the data. To do that, click on the index block file button. The block file indexer window appears, then select the directory where you like to save the data. The file will be in the .res format. Click on Save, then click on Start. The software is running, and you can see a progress bar on top. It takes about 6 minutes to index the map, so we'll fast forward this part. Once the process has finished, click on Close to close this window. And we are done with the data reconstruction. And now we are ready to visualize the data. And this is something we're going to show you in the next video.